Headmaster, fellow teachers, students. Today, I'm going to talk about the country from where I'm from, Sweden. Now, you might not know a lot about Sweden. I moved from Sweden uh, about six years ago to Hong Kong. And the first thing we need to make sure is that we don't talk about Switzerland. Everyone I meet here says, oh, Switzerland is so nice. High mountains, chocolate, wristwatches. Must be a great place. And I say, Switzerland is a great place, but it's not where I'm from. I'm from Sweden. So the first thing I realized when I came to Hong Kong was that Hong Kong is, in many ways, the opposite of Sweden. It's not like uh, Sweden at all. So if you look at Sweden, it's very large. There are places in Sweden where you can get in a car and drive two hours and not meet a single car on the road. There are places where kids take a school bus for an hour to get to school, and when they get there, there are 30 other kids in the whole school, because that's how many people live around there. So it's not a lot of people, about 9 million on an area about the same size as France. Um, has a very long history. And if you think uh, Chinese history is boring, you should do Swedish history. It's really boring. So all the kings are called the same thing. So for example, my first name, which is Eric, there are 14 kings called Eric, and I needed to, <laughs> to study those. Right? So there are 16 kings called Gustav, and so on. So you just need to study all this in school. It's a very long history. You can see the flag there. You might have seen it in sports competitions and so on. It's very cold. Now you think Hong Kong is cold right now. I've seen you wear the big jackets. I just went back to Sweden for Christmas. We had minus 15 one day. Now you're trying to think, what is minus 15? Sounds like very cold. It's the same temperature as your freezer at home. So if you stick your head in the freezer and keep it there for a while, you will know what it's like to go outside in Sweden. Uh, as I teach economics, I also have to talk about the economy, of course. We have, in Sweden, have the highest taxes in the world. So about half of your income is taken out of your paycheck every month. And this pays for a lot of stuff. So for example, I never paid school fees, even at university. That gets me to my next point, which is going to school. Now, teaching in a school, as I do here, I realize my schooling was very different from yours. So the first thing is um, we don't really start school as early as you do. Uh, I started school at 7, and before then, I didn't know how to read. None of my classmates know how to read. We started reading at age seven. We had, I had my first English class in primary four. So the school system is very different. It's more based on play. It's more based on discovering your own thing. Got my first report card in grade eight. Before then, I, I had no grades. No one had grades. I got some test results and so on, and I got uh, my teachers talked to my parents, but there were no grades. I never wore a school uniform, which you might think it's quite a nice thing. You can wear whatever you like, but it's also big stress. Every morning, you have to think, what should I wear today? You know, how should I look good? And I didn't go to a boys' school, so I had to impress the girls as well. So what should I wear to make me look good? I had to convince my parents to buy me the cool jeans. Right? To uh, look good in school. In grade 10 to 12, I didn't have to go to school. It was voluntary. <laughs> you think about that. How many of you would go to school? This puts a great um, burden on the kids, right? They have to be motivated by themselves. It's a great responsibility to get up very early in the morning, especially when it's 15 degrees outside. Right? It's a freezer outside. Your bed is warm and comfy. It's 7 a.m. and you have a biology test or a test on the kings of Sweden that morning. 
and you don't have to go. So it's very different. Another thing that is really different is school teams and clubs didn't exist. Uh, and this does, didn't mean that people didn't do sports or music, it's just it was outside the school. So school was only for learning, and when you were done with the day, you left, and then you, if you played football or sang in a choir, you did that outside of school. Now, you know a lot of famous stuff from Switzerland, I imagine, right? The mountains, the chocolate, watches, and so on. But there might be stuff that you've seen that you don't realize are Swedish. So for example, when you walk past Langham Place, you see the biggest, busiest store, H&M. That is a Swedish company. Seen this guy, <laughs> Ibrahimovic. He's Swedish. You might be using this one on your smartphone, on your way to school, listening to music. Your parents might want you to win one of these one day. <laughs> Nobel Prize, right? That's the pressure they put on you guys. Go out and win a Nobel Prize. You might be listening to this guy, Avicii. So these, I think these examples can teach Hong Kong students something. Because the, the people behind these phenomena have certain characteristics. First of all, they're risk takers. They do something new. And they're also very self-confident. If you're ever in a, in a meeting and there is a Swede around, he's going to do most of the talking. Because he thinks he knows best, even though he didn't study a lot at school. So I'm going to use three of these examples to just highlight how taking risks, trying new things, and being self-confident can, uh, can get you quite far. I'm going to start with Spotify. Now, some of you might have this on your phone. So 2008, a, two guys came together, two IT guys, and said, we have an idea. We're going to put all the music in the world on your computer or your smartphone and it's going to be a monthly fee. And they tried to convince people to invest in this. People said, that's impossible. Everyone is just downloading their music for free. Why should we build something like this? No one is willing to pay for music anymore, especially since we have another Swedish invention that none of you ever tried, I know, Pirate Bay. No one's ever been on that website, I'm sure. So these guys kept working towards their goal, even though it seemed impossible. They put all their own money into this. And right now, they have 10 million people all over the world paying a monthly fee, me included. We have another guy, Slatan Ibrahimovic. Now, when you look at Ibrahimovic on the pitch, you might think he's always been a star. But that's not true. When he was 15, 16 years old, he couldn't even make the youth team his local youth team. He was put on the bench, and they told him, your, your style of play doesn't work. You have to change it. You have to play more like a team player. You shouldn't do so much dribbling. Um, you should run more. But he, he believed in his own ability. But not just he, just, he did something about it as well. So he went home every night he spent hours practicing by himself, dribbling outside his home. He kept dribbling, practicing, watched a lot on YouTube on how to do it. And he's won the league in Holland, Italy, Spain, and France. And you've all seen his goals uh, on TV on, on, and on YouTube. Last guy I'm going to talk to you about. Not, maybe not as famous to all of you, if you're not listening to that kind of music. It's um, electronic music. His name is uh, Avicii, it's not his real name. He just made it up to make it sound cool. He has a much more boring name in real life. His name is Tim. Uh, <laughs> all right. Apologies to any Tims out there, but Avicii is colder. Uh, he has no formal training in music. He never passed the grade eight piano exam. He never took any music classes. He sat at home with his computer, made music at home. But once again, he put a lot of effort into it. Every night he went home, tried new things, 
And instead of saying, well, I'll never get anywhere, he just put his music out there on the internet, which any one of you can do. It's very easy. Anyone nowadays can put their music online. And people started listening to his songs. And he got encouragement, and he made more music. And right now, he's one of the most um, played artists worldwide. So my conclusion from this is, how can you be more like a Swede? Well, not like any Swede, like these successful Swedes. How, what can you learn from these? So I want you to ask yourself three questions. One is, what ideas do you have? Do you also make music at home? Right? Practice that. Put it online. Do you want to start a business one day? Right? Work towards that goal. If you want to be a really good footballer, then practice by yourself. Work towards that goal and believe in yourself. Where can you take a risk? Where can you do something new? So think about this as well. So for example, if you're very into music, you don't just have to do what everyone else is doing. You know, write your own songs. So think about where you can take a risk. And finally, where can you try something new? Because if you really want to go um, to, to do something really great, then you have to do something new. You have to try something new. You have to take a risk. So that would conclude um, my sharing for today. So my, um, my final words to you are be more like a Swede, but still wear your uniform and come to school. <laughs> Thank you.